Welcome to level one, project one. In project one, we will be working with Git and GitHub. I found this article uh, back in 2014 that was created, five mini programming projects for the Python beginner. And it has five mini projects that every beginner should be able to do once learning the basics of Python. So this is level one, project one. Let's get started. I don't know what I'm even doing there. I just finished the Pluralsight course, um, getting started with Git. This instructor was taught by Aaron Stewart. He did a fantastic job of explaining and covering the bare minimum the, and the fundamentals and what exactly you can expect when working with Git. Uh, he just went into briefly enough information that we can start our own GitHub profile and actually start uploading our projects out into uh, the GitHub environment. A common misconception uh, and something that I'm guilty of, of myself is thinking that Git and GitHub are the same thing. They are not the same thing. They are often associated with being the same thing, but they're not the same thing. GitHub is the web-based front where you can upload your projects using Git. Git simply uh, stores your projects on your local machine. I'm going to go ahead and create a GitHub profile. I would suggest that you follow along and do the same. You can uh, upload your projects and you can have uh, basically remote access to these projects. So let's go ahead and create this GitHub profile. So we're just going to go ahead and move over onto uh, my machine here, my laptop, and we're just going to go to GitHub, create my username, upload my email address. We're gonna go ahead and use the free account. Uh, you can also sign up for a subscription, which is only $7 per month. We're just gonna go ahead and sign up for this free account. All right, I know that that was like really simple. I mean, obviously you can do that, but the reason why I'm showing this is literally to prompt you to go ahead and create your own GitHub profile. Even if you are completely new to programming, I think referencing other people's code is often a great way to get started uh, when reading the syntax. Once you understand the syntax, you can start to read other people's code and really understand how to implement design. So go ahead and create your own GitHub profile today. I will leave a link in the description below. Let's get moving to these mini projects. I am on mini project number four right now, which is uh, a text-based adventure game. I thought I would go ahead and brainstorm what my game or little this little text-based adventure game is gonna look like. So here's what I've come up with. All right, so I know this is kind of hard to see, but I've written down kind of my logic and how this game is gonna be structured. So to quickly go through this, um, Basically, the, the, the structure of the game is to find the IT nerd. Okay, yeah, I know, not really original. And I'm going to put the setting in walking into the dorm, and that's where it's going to start. Now, the end goal is he's in the dresser. So he's, he's in the dresser, and that's where our end goal is. Now, this game could go on for a long time, you know, because you could have so many options. I have my options, and I have two main options. I have the first main option, and then I have the section, se second main option. And as you can see uh, with the arrows, I'm going to be referring back to some similar scenarios, some similar prompts. Um, so basically, this is how I'm structuring my game. I'm giving myself a little bit of options. This is my logic. So now what I do is I'm going to go ahead and translate this logic into my code. So let's do that now. Ah, 
Prince Hello World. If you are a beginner in programming, I am almost positive that you have now understood what the Prince Hello World program does. After learning the basics uh, of programming, let's say we learn the basic syntax of programming. When we expand our scope beyond the Prince Hello World program, and we go into more sophisticated programs, a lot of beginners and novices will soon become lost and have no idea where to start. Through uh, time and through experience, I've come up with a four-step process that I use and utilize uh, when being lost and starting a project. I'm gonna quickly break down this step-by-step -step process. Step one, take a blank notepad and write down what you think the program will do. What are you trying to accomplish? Oftentimes when we write our logic on a notepad and we don't put in the exact syntax, we kind of start to understand um, what exactly the structure of the overall program will be. The second step in my own process is trying to take that logic, that basic programming logic, readable human logic that anyone could read, and put that into a syntax that is readable to the computer. Now, the program may not work exactly the way you want it to, but at least now you have some structure. But let's say you're still very lost. You have some uh, maybe some basic code uh, that you translated from your logic, from your notepad, but it's not really working the way you want it to. The third step is uh, referencing online resources. The two main resources I always recommend for students, Stack Overflow and GitHub. Number four is going back to your uh, file text editor or your interpreter or whatever it is, and it is to implement what you learn from uh, your online referencing. This is the four step process I have kind of uh, outlined and structured myself around when uh, utilizing and uh, learning programming and programming language in general. I finished all five of my Python mini projects. These mini projects referenced from the article, I will leave a link in the description below, uh, include a dice rolling simulator, a guessing the number, um, we have a Mad Libs generator, which I'll explain in a moment, we have a text-based adventure game, and lastly we have Hangman. So all three of these programs have been relatively simple, a little bit of print statements, nothing that's uh, too complex. The next one I had a little bit of fun. I decided to incorporate the IT nerd. Uh, so mini project number four is a text-based adventure game. And if you've ever played one of these games, you'll find that you can do so many options. And so I don't do any of that. Uh, I make it very, very short, very, uh, very simple because, well, you can really go on with a text-based adventure game. So let's go ahead and get into mini project number four with the IT nerd involved. I'll show you in a minute. Ah, that's it. Well, that was a very easy game. You, you see the dresser doors open slightly, you walk towards it, you open the door, find the IT nerd. Smells of BO. Mission complete. Good job, IT nerd. Hunter, you gave him the can of deodorant and found him. If only the situation really happened in real life. Hmm. What are you doing here, you idiot? This was level one, project one. Well, it was five mini projects. And within these mini projects, I had done some little code as you could have just seen from the clips before. And we also learned Git, the very, very basics of Git. So what are my overall takeaways from uh, level one, project one? I think one of the biggest things for me personally was using the method that I explained earlier in the video, the four step method to solving pro programs that you really don't know how to solve in the beginning, taking it one step at a time. 
My hopes is that you can use this to your advantage, especially for anyone who's beginning with programming in cybersecurity. The other big takeaway I got from this project was how easy it is to get it up and running with Git. In all honesty, it was very easy to create, of course, a GitHub profile, but not only that, but it's super easy to get started with Git and push your projects towards GitHub for others to critique and basically see what you're doing with your profile. Now, there's always ways I can improve the, uh, the way my code is written and how I attack a certain problem. So for any of you guys who are a little bit more advanced, my challenge to you is to email me or get on the Discord community server and try to see different ways that you could critique my many projects in my code. Uh, of course, I will always apply these changes once they are submitted. So get on the Discord community. The link will be in the description below and you will really uh, be able to help me. That is it for level one, project one. We are now off to level two. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and have a good day.